Hey everybody, this is Dave with AndroidPolice.com, and today we're doing our first hands-on initial impressions kind of thing with the Droid Charge by Samsung on Verizon's 4G network. Um, just got this review unit a little earlier today, and uh, the first thing you know you notice is the box. It's pretty cool. Uh, everything about the Droid Charge is actually pretty cool looking, at least. Uh, we'll get into the not cool parts in a bit here, but as you can see, you've got this super cool big droid red eye thing going on the box and it's super sleek and sexy and I heard Steve Jobs like Samsung's packaging so much that he actually sued them for it so that's fun uh, the actual phone which I'll pull out here uh, is right here and uh, as you can see it's you know uh, a 4.3 inch screen 4.3 inch screen device uh, You've got this really cool faux carbon fiber backing on the phone, and the uh, camera looks suspiciously like the uh, Decepticon logo from Transformers, not pointing any fingers there at anyone. Uh, it's sort of like a stealth fighter of a phone, which probably, you know, where Samsung got the little nickname it had for a while, the code name Stealth. Uh, it's super light, and... Uh, it does have that feel that all Samsung devices do, that when you poke it, you can feel things kind of vibrating inside. But that's what you get when you have a plastic frame phone. So you save weight, but it does feel a little cheap. Uh, but not as cheap as a Galaxy S phone does. It's substantially better than that, I will say. And uh, everything about it feels pretty solid, though. Uh, the battery cover here, let me show you this. I couldn't believe how thin it was when I uh, went to go take it off to look at what's underneath here. Uh, the battery cover is, it weighs absolutely nothing. I, uh, it feels like it was made out of milk carton plastic. It, uh, it is seriously, I, I think you could probably pretty easily break this if you weren't careful. But uh, hopefully I won't go about doing that anytime soon. Uh, so anyway, inside underneath the case here we've got the battery which is a pretty big guy it's a 1600 milliamp battery uh, so bigger than the Thunderbolts battery you've got the 4G LTE SIM card right there the camera and then you've got the 32 gigabyte micro SD card the stealth come or the uh, excuse me the charge comes standard with uh, let me slap the cover back on here and we'll power this guy up uh, so the boot animation is pretty cool as soon as I get the turn on here okay there we go takes a minute to get through the first boot screen here so then we get the droid thing going that super high quality audio uh, that's probably the coolest droid boot screen I've seen so far probably the coolest boot screen I've seen on any phone. Uh, so that's got that going for it. The uh, the charge is definitely all about aesthetics. It is probably the coolest looking Android phone I've ever seen. Uh, but we'll get into why it may not be the coolest Android phone ever, period, in just a moment here, after it uh, decides to finish booting up. Uh, as you can see on the phone here, you've got these hardware buttons instead of capacitive touch. Uh, the feel on them is actually really good. They're, you don't have to press them too hard. I always felt on the Droid X you had to press the buttons a little too hard to uh, get them to activate. On this it's a lot easier. Uh, other hardware features, uh, let's see, I don't have the cover snap all the way on there. Uh, you've got the, the speakerphone bars actually on the bottom of the phone, underneath here rather than up top. Uh, you've, got the, uh, mic you've got the microphone uh, underneath here that little tiny dot and uh, the speaker grill up there is actually pretty small uh, alright so let's unlock the screen here so what I've done and uh, while it's booting up here and finding all the media is uh, I've slapped all of the widgets that Samsung puts on this phone stock when you get it back onto the home screens uh, so they should pull up here in a moment and uh, so when I first turned on this phone I had difficulty believing just how slow it could be uh, staggering between home screens here. Uh, you can see it's pretty laggy right now. I mean, we're getting used to, especially with phones like the Thunderbolt or the Inspire, even phones with the uh, HTC Sense overlay, the home screen scrolling has just gotten a lot better and Samsung has just not, uh, not made a lot of headway on that front with this phone, unfortunately. 
Uh, it is running Froyo. It is running TouchWiz. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you can delete all these widgets, uh, which is what I'm going to do right here, so I can actually use this in an efficient manner to uh, show you a few things. Um, the sheer number of widgets is amazing, and the sheer uselessness of them is equally amazing. So, the phone does not come with Twitter or Facebook installed, which is annoying. Uh, I found that was a little stupid. Uh, I think everybody uses those apps at this point, and I think Samsung's fooling themselves that they think that their apps are any better than Twitter or Facebook's official Android apps. Uh, as you can see, the home screen scrolling has gotten a lot smoother now that I've removed all those wonderful widgets. Uh, we can get into the phone here, and we can see the About menu. Uh, it's running, as I said, Android Froyo and uh, the Model SEHI 510. Uh, what else? Uh, the menus, once you're inside uh, the menus that Samsung has hardware acceleration enabled on, very smooth running, uh, like on a, a Galaxy S phone. Uh, it's the home screen lag that really gets you. Uh, earlier I was trying to uh, do a little 3D test with Dungeon Defenders uh, to see how the uh, the processor, the Hummingbird processor in this guy runs and it gave me a kernel panic and rebooted the phone. So. Uh, the droid charge might be a little buggy at this point on the software, and I'm not sure either that or Dungeon Defenders, you know, needs to do a little updating to get support for the phone in. Uh, the Samsung software you get with the phone, as far as bloatware goes, there isn't a whole lot of Verizon bloatware going on. Uh, you just don't get, uh, you know, uh, Samsung really wants you to use all of their uh, integrated apps for, you know, email and social networks and all that stuff, and they all kind of suck. So, uh, you can get all the good apps on there no, without too much hassle. Uh, and getting everything set up is just as easy as any other phone. Uh, I haven't obviously had time to look at battery life, and as you can see here on the screen, I don't live in an area with 4G coverage at the moment. Uh, I'll be doing some 4G coverage in the uh, Los Angeles area, some testing of the 4G, see how fast it is, and uh, we'll give you some speed test results on that. Uh, so you'll have that information with a full review next week. Uh, as far as everything else goes, you know, I'm just I'm still at this point just playing with the phone and just trying to uh, get used to the way Samsung does things. Uh, generally, I think it's a good phone, and I think it'd probably be a lot better if Samsung had you know really worked on making the TouchWiz experience smoother, and maybe you know tried to get this phone running Gingerbread out of the box. But uh, hopefully they'll work on that update and get it out fairly soon. Uh, that concludes our little initial hands-on here for the, uh, for the Droid Charge by Samsung. And uh, like I said, our full review we publish next week, and you'll get the full info. Uh, the Droid Charge is not currently available on Verizon, and uh, Verizon hasn't announced when it will be available. Presumably in the next few days, uh, they delayed the launch because of the 4G network outage they had uh, yesterday. So hopefully you'll be able to pick one of these up soon, if you want to pick one up, because you will be shelling out $300 to do so on a new two-year agreement, which is pretty steep for a single-core phone that's running an older version of Android and honestly isn't all that cutting edge. But if you really want LTE and you really don't like Thunderbolt, the charge is pretty much your only choice for a while on Verizon. Alright everyone, that's this is Dave from Android Police, signing off.